know if you hear me. How is that sounding for everyone here? How is it sounding? Sound is good? Awesome. Let's go. Hey, welcome into our uh, Wednesday, April 3rd edition. For everyone on the replay, who the hell knows what day it is? But uh, wow, what a, what a day. Everyone, uh, please go get everyone in Teresa's chat and bring them over here. Uh, tell them, uh, come get some actual information. Uh, we're going to uh, deep dive into Todd Click's uh, words. And um, we're not going to give a shit about uh, what Nicholas McClellan has to say. And so uh, there's no reason to read uh, Nicholas McClellan's uh, gaslighting, slanderous, and um, insulting words. I mean, this is the guy who says that it doesn't matter that Tony Liggett lied and misrepresented on the PCA. You guys want me to refresh that right quick? Uh, before we get into it, before we get into it, yeah, like I said, go get everyone off Teresa's stream because this is bullshit. Um, I have no friends in this game. I have no friends in this game. And I'm not trying to. All right. <clears throat> Let's see what we got here. I'm going to read this to you so that you can uh, understand the type of shit we're dealing with with this son of a bitch. And I don't mean about uh, using language that's upsetting to you. I don't care about it. Let me pull these words up. <clears throat> these words should piss off even the most uh, insane Delphi fanatic. Matter of fact, I'm about to... Shit. Should I just go get it and put it on the screen? <sighs> I didn't want to. Let's see. Okay, let's do it this way. Because normally, uh, normally, I would not care to put this on the screen. But this is so ludicrous that I guess it's worth it. Let me let me see. It'll take me a moment. Take me a little moment here to get this on the damn screen. All right, so listen up. I almost forgot to be a gentleman here and uh, welcome everyone in. So before I get to that, let's say a hello, Amy. Beautiful Amy here, Ronnie Reed. What's up, beautiful Ronnie Reed? How are you? Thanks for the flowers, Amy. Last live had excellent chat. Oh, yes, it did. And it had excellent information, but uh, too many people. Here's the thing we got with Delphi. It's really fucking ridiculous. You have two cults. You have the Richard Allen is innocent cult, and you have the Richard Allen is a baby killer cult. Okay, You have two cults. You know, forget about the cult who actually murdered these girls. You have two insane, maniacal audience and creator cults, and uh, we call them the uh, fucking lunatics, the fanatics, the maniacs, uh, those who say Richard Allen is totally innocent without any evidence to prove to themselves so, and those who say Richard Allen is totally guilty without any evidence to prove to themselves so. However, uh, rare are the people like us and like myself who actually say, I don't fucking know if Richard Allen is innocent or guilty, and I'm definitely not going to click up with a bunch of other lunatics who have some extreme opinion. You know, I'm going to be a free agent here and do what I do. So, yeah. I was going somewhere with that, but I don't even feel like finishing that direction. It's just that these people, I'll tell you what, it's, it's really insulting. It's insulting. I don't understand how people can support Rick Snay, 
okay, with all that he has done, all the damage he has done to people in this community and all the damage he has done to the case, okay, but you have maniacal, fanatical, disgusting individuals who would prefer to suck on the balls of Rick Snay rather than to hold him accountable for his own actions. And it pisses me off. But yes, my, my last presentation, it was incredible. No one else has presented such a, a thorough, in-depth presentation of the crime scene. No one else has shown you the actual sticks placed on the girls uh, in their actual configurations. No one else has, uh, has spoken so clearly about the positioning of the bodies and the sticks and the potential uh, meanings. And no one else has had such a nice, uh, educated guest on, guest on to help um, bounce ideas off of regarding this symbolism, okay? But because of the assholes, very few people will watch that excellent show. Welcome in, KS. I guess that's where I was getting at. Welcome in, Just James. This is my second time joining a live uh, with the Prof. Happy to be here. Well, thank you, Just James. It's people like you who actually make this thing go around. Meow, meow, welcome in. Hi, all. Hi, all, meow. Welcome in, James and Meow. All, right. all you guys are great here, yes? And I'm just on a little rant. I'm in a bad mood today. I'll just let you know. I was so late for the last one, I got to the end, but then rewatched the whole thing. It was excellent. Well, thank you. I humbly would agree with you. It was excellent. And there's more where it came from, but I can't even have the time to do all that I want to do. Okay. Because, but I, I, I'll say it this way. Contrary to popular opinion, this job pays about 50 cents or a dollar an hour. Okay, that's the real story. So the fact that I cannot sustain what it takes to do this, you know what I mean? It's, it's like I'd have to make so much money a month that it, it doesn't pay for itself. So, yeah, 50 cents an hour, I'm a grifter. Sure, yeah. The guest was great. Yes, the beautiful Adrian. All right. What up, Jay Rabbit? Jay Rabbit, what up in the house, Jay Rabbit? Meow says, absolutely, I have no knowledge about any of this as I'm not religious or spiritual in any sense. But I do find very uh, historically intriguing and, of course, relevant here. Yes, because it doesn't matter what it means to us. It matters what it meant to those insane maniacs who killed the girls good evening frenchy what up french what up for baby daddy for baby daddy in the house i'm here hey prof everyone can relax yeah what up but you know who's not relaxing your ex-girlfriend yeah. sounds good thank you thanks for helping out with the uh, sound check sound check gen c welcome in gen c Right. Yeah, for baby daddy, we miss you when you're not here. Hello. Everyone's screaming and no one is listening. They just want to be right. <sighs> Thank you, Amy. Ronnie Reed, I'm pissed too, Prof. Yeah. I'll tell you. Uh, no comment. No comment. I hope you can cheer me up. I'm in a bad mood, but I usually cheer up by the end of the show. You know how this, I, oh, you're new, but usually by the end of the show, I'm in a better mood than the beginning be honest with you because I never I never enjoy uh, getting on to start the show it's just I have a lot of frustration built around all the insane gaslighting around this case I have better gear I play it better too really resonate with the last stream everything was so well explained well thank you I mean and you know that's just a uh, Tell you what, we could do a lot better. 
there could we could do, we could be doing a lot better <clears throat> it's just difficult it's a difficult field it's a difficult uh corner of the true crime because all of the people invested in this delphi case are absolute fucking maniacs they're unhinged morons they have very little critical thinking skills they're uh they're hell bent on personal attacks okay that's so all they want to do is uh, engage in personal attacks and um the worst of them, their attempt is to make you kill yourself or get off YouTube or the internet altogether, you know, and that's well stated. It's documented. We have proof of it. Uh, I've submitted a lot of it to law enforcement. They want you to get off of YouTube altogether or kill yourself. And uh, I have multiple examples of them uh, openly stating to their friends that uh, they, they hope that we kill ourselves. And those who don't wish that people kill themselves, they still engage in the personal attacks and they engage in the cocksucking and all the other shit that they do, like the way they go over to Rick Snay and uh, and um, and suck on the small balls. It makes no sense whatsoever. I mean, that guy right there, he's pretty much ruined my life. He's pretty much ruined my life, okay? And no one gives a shit. No one gives a shit. And if I say something about it, you know what they say? Oh, you need to stop being upset with people over Snay. No, I don't. No, I don't. Because the fact that you would go befriend someone who has done so much harm to me and has still not apologized, still not uh, removed the damaging things and, and, and made it right, uh, that just shows me that you don't give a shit about me. OK, you really want to know the fact you don't give a shit about me so you can fuck off. <clears throat> Welcome in, Rochelle D. Welcome in, Rochelle D. How do we stop it? You hold people accountable for their own words and their own deeds. But uh, apparently accountability uh, does not happen in the Delphi community. It's all about politics. You, I hope you see what's going on, okay? Because those who are on the uh, fanatical, remember I said there's two sides of fanatics. There's the Richard Allen is guilty side, okay? There's a Richard Allen is innocent side, okay? Both these fanatical uh Contingents, all they care about is their political stances, you know, so that's why they don't give a shit about personal accountability. They don't give a shit about the damage that Rick Snay has done and and that he has not fixed any of it. No, all the ones on the Richard Allen is innocent guy. Uh, Richard Allen is in innocent side. They'll still hang on to Rick Snay's nuts because of the politics of the situation, because he feels Rick Allen is innocent because it's convenient at this time. Right. It's frustrating. It's frustrating. I'm in the middle. I don't have an extreme opinion. I feel like my extreme opinion is I want the truth to come out about the murders of the of the, the Delphi murder victims. That's all. That's my extreme opinion. So speaking of that, let me uh, let me let's get this on the screen because I wanted to start off with sh reading this to you, but I guess I'll just show it to you. Uh, it won't hurt. Jay Rabbit says, "Where's my chocolate?" <laughs> I need it, buddy. I'll probably go get some in a, in a moment. Hold on. Let's see if I can whoop, whip this onto the screen right quick. Let's see. All right, now this is something that makes you want to uh, literally hurt somebody. Okay, literally hurt somebody right here. I don't know if you can, if you could even believe your ears here. Okay. I'm going to start about halfway through where the most extreme gaslighting occurs. Halfway through. Okay, halfway through. Sheriff Tony Liggett did not intentionally or recklessly omit evidence or lie about evidence in the probable cause affidavit to support the search warrant in an effort to mislead the judge. What? Seems to me, I remember him saying muddy and bloody when there was no muddy and bloody. That's not a lie. That's not inventing the word bloody, putting it in a witness's mouth, and then putting it in a legal document to, to sway the judge. So, you're, so McClellan, you're... So you're you you know what you're doing, Nicholas McClellan? You are revealing 
your own lack of ethics. Yes, that's what you are doing, Nicholas McQueen. Okay, because we know for a fact that there was no bloody. So you propping up Tony Liggett's outright invention of the word bloody and putting it in the mouth of a witness, aiming it at Richard Allen, you attempting to justify that outright lie by saying he did not intentionally or recklessly lie. You are revealing your own lack of ethics. I think you should leave the booze and the coke alone. You really should. You should drop the powder. You should drop the fucking bottle. The facts in the affidavit are true and accurate and are supported by evidence collected in the case. Where? Not that we've seen. Tony Liggett relied on that evidence when drafting, drafting the affidavit for the search warrant as the best reliable information known to him and related to Richard Allen at the time of the request. Really, what about the putting the guy walking on 300 in a blue jacket when it was not a blue Carhartt jacket? How do you rectify that, Nicholas McQueen? Because it seems to me that you are colluding and also lying or misrepresenting in this conclusion here in order to sway the judge at this point, which is an entirely different judge. Then you go on to say, there are no inaccuracies or omissions in the probable cause for the search warrant that are of a material nature and the defense argument that law enforcement dishonestly is pervasive and relates back to the affidavit in question is not supported by sworn statements, affidavits, or other reliable statements. What about the actual statements of the witness? Because it seems to me that not only did you put different clothes on the guy walking on 300, you put the word bloody as coming out of that witness's mouth. Not only that, there are many other inaccuracies, lies, and misrepresentations that Liggett included in the affidavit that we now know about. And still, yet, on this date of April 3rd, 2024, you expect people to believe that your conclusion holds any water. You expect people to believe that just because you construct the document and just because you allege that Liggett did not lie intentionally or recklessly omit evidence, etc., that the defense should not receive a Frank's hearing? What about Elvis Fields? Do you see why uh, there's no way one can be happy about words such as this? Just a moment.
Okay, French. Got a white chocolate bunny for Easter. I guess I will agree to eat chocolate. That's what I'm doing at the moment. That's what I am doing. Thank you for the reminder to calm down. Thank you so much for the reminder. Just when you think the Delphi shit show can't get shittier, it does. Yeah. I mean, this cokehead alcoholic who uh, is alleged. Hey, let's let's get back to this. OK, let's get back to this before I go on. You may remember Nicholas McClellan. OK, being alleged in the. Uh, you guys remember the post hearing memorandum not too long ago, and uh, there was an appendix to the post memorandum. I mean, the post hearing memorandum, there was an appendix that had several line items and uh, number 65 stated the following. OK. Nick drunk at bar. My cousin was there, Derek. Nick said, Cody Patty should be worried. And that was right before number 66, where they discussed Nick on that powder. OK. So, yeah, Nick drunk at bar. This is number 65 in the appendix to the post uh, hearing memorandum. Nick drunk at bar. My cousin was there, Derek. Nick said, Cody Patty should be worried. Oh, but we forget about that. We're supposed to take his word that uh, Liggett didn't lie, even though the defense has proven that Liggett lied. I mean, hello, are we in a, what kind of Twilight Zone world is this? What kind of Twilight Zone world is this? We know that Liggett lied and misrepresented. You think that he did not intentionally insert the word bloody? I mean, are we going to what kind of crack are we smoking here in this audience? What kind of crack do we smoke that we believe that he did not intentionally add the word bloody to muddy and change the color of the jacket in order to make that guy bridge guy, make that guy Richard Allen and make that guy bloody. Therefore, the blood must have come from the girls. Therefore, he must be guilty. You know what the point of the Frank's memorandum is? It's called fruit of the poisonous tree. McClellan is afraid of the fruit of the poisonous tree. Thank you guys. Uh, there's so much more. There is so much more. Uh, I know Amy now is posting the support pathways. Please support the channel. I mean, I don't mean to be in a bad mood. But I got to say this, you guys, please support the channel. Please support the channel. That's, I cannot continue without support from the channel. And uh, we only got a couple people supporting the channel. Uh, it's, it's a lot of weight on them. Please support the channel. Um, yeah, so, so before I get into more, okay. Before I get into more, I want to make some comments on Facebook about Facebook. Because there's some real fucking maniacs on Facebook. Okay. Kimberly Stavrakis Withers. Okay. Todd Danzer. Tammy Allen McRae. You are some real pieces of shit. You know that? You are some real pieces of shit, Kimberly. Todd. And I hope this message gets to you, Kimberly, Kimberly Withers. You're a real piece of shit. Todd Danzer. Real piece of shit. I'll leave it at that. Facebook is just a, uh, if you want to see the crazies, you want to see the crazies in action, take a look at any of the Facebook groups, any of the Facebook groups. If all you have to do is join those uh, Facebook groups, and you're going to see crazies in action. You're going to see you're going to see shit that you will not believe. 
you're going to see shit that you will not believe if you just join those Facebook groups because uh, that's where all the crazies hang out on Facebook. Cody joined the neo-Nazis while in prison. Is Cody a Vinlander, Dirty White Boys, or Aryan Nation? Yeah. Or is he in business with the Odinites? Odiners? Odinists? Sure does look like Cody's tied into that group. Welcome in digital. Yeah, I said go get everyone from Teresa's. Bring them over here where there's actually uh, relevant information uh, going on. We're not going to cover the uh, Nicholas McClellan gaslighting. It's a God thing. Welcome in. Welcome in. So, uh, so here you're looking at the record of proceedings at the hearing on motion to dismiss held March 18, 2024. Okay, remember that? Remember that? Now, I know all of these desperate YouTubers who believe Richard Allen is innocent, they have gone so far as to read this for you immediately like it was hot off the presses, like they could not control themselves and blaze through it. But that's not what we're going to do today. We're going to do a multi-part series, and today is part one. Okay, so we're going to do, you know what we do here, we do deep dives. We actually present thorough ex examinations of material. And, um, and so... We're going to uh, we're going to deep dive our asses off here into this uh, March eighteenth, twenty twenty four hearing, and uh, and we're going to do so in a very uh, prof way. Okay, we're going to examine today, Mr. Todd Click. This will be episode number one. We're going to have uh, several parts to this because uh, part we will be getting into Amber Holder, Steve Mullen and uh the rest of it so today we're going to be focusing on todd click so i hope you uh you brought your seat belts your beverages your snacks and your thinking caps because uh it's very important that we take a close ex examination of todd click and uh unfortunately he's not allowed to come on our shows and talk to us and uh really open up about this okay because he's under the gag order so we have to accept the limited information that comes out in the court record. And that's all we can get because he, unlike the family and the others, actually respects the gag order and will not violate that gag order. So we will be listening to Mr. Todd Click here and uh, trying to understand some things that he is able to relate via the record and uh, in the court and therefore inform us. Okay. So, I just want to thank everyone who's here. I don't expect you to read along, but I will be having our screen open in case you would like to read along on Zoom. <laughs> Zoom in on in, but uh, I will be attempting to read through for you. And it'll be a long jaunt because obviously this is many pages. But, um, but we'll be looking at Todd Click, and then afterwards we will discuss with the chat, and uh, then we'll call it a night, okay? So here we go with Mr. Todd Click, March 18, 2024, in the uh, court of Fran Gall. One moment, please. Okay, now, we're going to make it through this really quickly. I'll, break, I'll blaze through this without any commentary because uh, this is just the uh, setting the stage here. The court says, before we get started, and Ms. Diener, I understand you'll be handling... The state's argument on the motion to dismiss. And Diener says, yes, I will. Court says, okay, I just wanted to advise counsel that when I granted the defense request for speedy trial and set the trial as scheduled, I caused the jury office to begin the process to get the jury questionnaires out to everybody. And on March 14th, the questionnaire packets went out in the mail. That was the questionnaire that you all looked at before and submitted with the letter to the court or from the court dated March 11, 2024, to accompany the questionnaire. 
and I establish the same timeline that we had before. So as soon as the questionnaires come back, I will provide those counsel or those to counsel on a flash drive. And then I know before we part company here and after the motion to dismiss, there are several motions filed by both sides that we'll need to address before we go off the record. Okay. Rossi says, may I? Court says, yes. Rossi says, judge, with regard to the questionnaire, did the court include the proposals from both sides or court says, yes, either side. I just didn't understand exactly. Court says, yes, you did. Whatever questionnaire you all approved and submitted back to the court is the questionnaire. Okay, says Rossi. Court says, that went out. All right, very good, thank you. I think the only thing that I didn't have from counsel, says the court, was a list of witnesses. But if you could provide that on the first day of jury, we can play that downstairs for them. All right, Mr. Baldwin, you may proceed with your motion to dismiss for destroying exculpatory evidence. Baldwin says, thank you. We call Todd Click. Witness is sworn. Court says, you may proceed. Thank you, judge, says Baldwin. All right, now we're into the direct examination of Todd Click. Uh, this is where you actually pay attention. Welcome in, everyone. Uh, this is where we pay attention. Dean, or have we heard that name before? Yeah. Mr. Baldwin says, state for the name your record. My name is Todd Click. Spell your name if you would. C-L-I-C-K, first name Todd, T-O-D-D. -D. What do you do for a living? I am currently a parole agent with the state of Indiana. What did you do prior to that? I was a police officer with the Rushville Police Department. How long did you do that? A little more than 20 years, from February 6, 2001. And then I retired December 31st, 2021. To get to the heart of this, have you worked on the Delphi case? Yes, I have. Okay, let me repeat that. Let me repeat that. Baldwin says, have you worked on the Delphi case? Click says, yes, I have. Can you tell the judge what kind of work you did on the case? Click, I provided investigative assistance to two other detectives. Detective Greg Ferency, who was a Terre Haute police officer with the, and he was also an FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force member, and Detective Kevin Murphy, who was Indiana State Police Detective, who was also an FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force member. Okay. What kind of things were you doing in terms of investigative support? Conducting interviews and trying to gather evidence. Over the course of how long did you do that? Roughly three years. I began providing assistance approximately June of 2018 and ceased when Detective Ferency was shot and killed in the line of duty, July 7th, 2021. A very interesting statement. Uh, you guys, please be aware of what is being said here. So he worked on Delphi three years, June of 2018, to the day Ferency was shot and killed, i.e. assassinated. Outside of, outside of the FBI office. We'll be getting into that later this year, into the shooter and his connections and his trial, which will be forthcoming. All right, can you give a very general understanding, a little bit more detail than you did, but still general, what kind of things you did? Okay, and Click says, well, in June of 2018, Detective Ferency and Detective Murphy came to Rushville. Remember, this is when he comes on board. To conduct an interview with a gentleman by the name of Elvis Field. So, so think of this. Okay, Think of this. Co Todd Click comes on board when Murphy and Ferency come to Rushville for Elvis Fields. They asked to use our interview uh, room at the Rushville Police Department. 
they asked me if I would be willing to operate the equipment for them. They asked me if I was familiar with Elvis Fields, to which I was. They asked if I would kind of watch the interview and kind of give my opinion on what, and uh, Baldwin says, kind of a hometown opinion. Then uh, Click says, yes. Okay, keep going. So Click says, okay. So after that, Detective Mur Murphy and Detective Ferency told me that they were looking at a couple of individuals from the Delphi area. Who were they? Okay, so listen up again. They're looking at Elvis Fields. They're asking Click to give his second opinion and to operate the recording equipment. Okay? Then they say, who were the individuals from the Delphi area? Brad Holder and Patrick Westfall. Okay, keep going. They asked me if I may be try and find a tie between Elvis Fields and Mr. Holder and Mr. Westfall. Okay, so what we have here, they've already been on to Holder and Westfall. They're coming to Rushville now to pursue Mr. Elvis Fields. They are asking Todd Click to assist and to give opinion and to, to, to maybe help and try to find the connection, if there exists one, between Holder, Westfall, and Fields. So that was one of your kind of things that you did in the course of this investigation? That is correct. Were you able to find any ties between Elvis Fields and Brad Holder and Patrick Westfall? Okay. Were you able to find any ties between Elvis Fields, Brad Holder, and Patrick Westfall? Yes, I was. What ties did you find? While reviewing some photographs on Brad Holder's Facebook page, I located a photograph with the approximately five individuals. They were all wearing Vinlander shirts. For those who don't know, what is a Vinlander? Vinlander is a group that practices Norse and pagan religion, kind of along the Viking culture. Keep going. So in the photos, I identified Brad Holder and Patrick Westfall, and there was a gentleman standing in between the two of them that I immediately recognized to be Johnny Messer. How do you know Johnny Messer? Johnny Messer is from Rushville. He's been arrested numerous times by the Rushville Police Department. So I was very, very familiar with Johnny. Okay. So Click is familiar with Elvis. Click sees the photo. Five guys wearing Vinlander shirts. Red flags, anyone? He notices it's Holder, Westfall, Johnny Messer. He recognizes that he has knowledge of Johnny because he's been arrested many times. What else, if anything, do you do following the recognition that Johnny Messer from Rushville was hanging out with these two guys from Delphi named Brad Holder and Patrick Westfall? Answer, so I knew from previous incidents that Johnny Messer's uncle, Billy Messer, used to live with Elvis Fields. So I knew from previous incidents that Johnny Messer's uncle, Billy Messer, used to live with Elvis Fields. Okay, so that's another connection. That's correct. Keep going. So I contacted Detective Ferency and Detective Murphy and told them specifically to look at that photo and that the individual standing in between Brad Holder and Patrick Westfall was Johnny Messer, who was an individual from Rushville and who was the nephew of the guy who Elvis Fields once lived with. Was there any other, uh, what did you do after that? So after that, I know that Detective Ferency and Detective Murphy came down to Rushville and we had conducted an interview with Johnny Messer. And then what happened? After conducting the interview, we also conducted an interview with Taylor Harnady, who was an ex-girlfriend of Johnny Messer. And did she provide any information that was useful in the investigation? Yes, she did. 
Okay, keep going. What next? She was able to provide photographs of Johnny Messer, Patrick Westfall, Brad Holder, several other individuals that the photographs were taken during club meetings or outings that the Benlander group conducted. Okay, what did you do then? We conducted several other interviews. I had specifically asked Johnny if he had tried to recruit anyone else from Rushville area to be part of the Vinlander group. He denied that he did. Okay, so he asks Messer, did you ever try to recruit for the Vinlanders from Rushville? Messer denies. Judge says, uh, I mean, uh, Miss Diener says, Judge, I'm going to object to him reporting on what Johnny Messer may have told him. Sustained. Miss Diener says, Johnny Messer is not here to testify. Question. After your interview with Johnny Messer, what then did you do? Todd Click. I conducted several interviews of people that I knew were connected to Johnny Messer. Okay, so remember, he's already interviewed Messer's ex-girlfriend, Taylor Hornady. <clears throat> okay, so he's looking at Messer closely. <clears throat> so now he begins to look at others associated with Messer. So he's really looking at Messer. And those individuals connected to Messer told me that Johnny had tried to recruit them into the Vinlander group. Okay, so he speaks to several individuals associated with Messer, they all report that Johnny was trying to recruit them into Vinlanders, okay? Into the Vinlanders. So what did you, so no, so after you learn that Johnny Messer is recruiting people, then what do you do? We had also during an interview with Taylor Hornady, uh, she had given us a cell phone of hers. She had indicated that there was a cell phone of hers that contained recordings of a kidnapping that Johnny was involved in. So we obtained a search warrant to go into the cell phone and conduct a forensic exam to retrieve those recordings. Okay, was that fruitful? Answer. There were recordings of Johnny Messer and another individual kidnapping an individual at gunpoint in the Indianapolis area. <laughs> Pardon me. What did you do then? Or what did you what did you then do? At that point, we tried to identify who the victim of that kidnapping was. But we were un unsuccessful. Okay, keep going. What was the kind of next big thing that you did on this case? So what was the next thing related to Delphi? All right, we conducted some other interviews. We had spoken with Joyce Moffitt, who is Elvis's field's sister. During that interview, she confirmed that she had heard Elvis make comments about things associated with the crime scene in Delphi. The murder crime scene of Abby Williams and Liberty German. For those in the back, we spoke with Joyce Moffat, who was Elvis's sister. During the interview, she confirmed that she had heard Elvis making comments about things associated with the crime scene, the murder crime scene of Abby Williams and Liberty German in Delphi. What did you do with that information or what did you do next? That information, of course, was given uh, myself, Detective Murphy, and Detective Ferency were aware of that information. And I was told by Detective Ferency and Detective Murphy that they were going to try to contact Unified Command to try and obtain a search warrant for the residents of Elvis Fields. Okay. Remember, who is Unified Command? Okay. Put it in the chat. You guys who are listening and, lur and lurking, come on, join the damn chat. Who is Unified Command? 
who's not responding to this information. What happened with that? We never heard anything. Unified Command never called and said, yep, tell us what information and we'll try to get that. Yeah, I, Detective Murphy and Detective Ferency were unable to give an answer as to whether or not we were authorized to get a search warrant. So Joyce Moffitt, Elvis's sister, says basically he's somehow involved in the crime and you weren't able to secure a search warrant of any type? That's correct. Okay, what happens next? We conducted several other interviews throughout that time frame. Okay, were there any other connections between Elvis Fields and Brad Holder that you know of? Answer. We were able to connect Elvis Fields to a gentleman by the name of Josh Chrisman. Josh Chrisman was originally part of a group called the American Guard. Hello? For you in the back who don't pay attention to a single damn thing, who believe everything the law enforcement and Nicholas McClellan is telling you. American Guard, Google it. There was a Make America Great Again rally that was held in Indianapolis approximately 2016, I believe, where the American Guard and Vinlanders were together. And after that rally, they had a house party at a gentleman's house by the name of Mickey McGilly. Mickey McGinley, says Baldwin. Yes, McGinley, thank you. He was also, Mr. McGinley was also a Vinlander. He was also friends with a gentleman by the name of Brian James. Brian James! Who was, I guess, the head of the American Guard. Okay? So we were able to connect Josh Chrisman. We knew that he was a semi truck driver and he conducted deliveries for a company called Flynn Livestock that would transport hogs to different facilities. I knew that Weichman Pig Farm in Delphi and then the Tyson plant in Logansport that they would make deliveries to. Elvis Fields kind of worked under the table at, at Flynn Livestock, and he would get paid by the drivers to load and unload the semis, and he would periodically ride with the drivers to make deliveries. So Johnny Messer knew, what's this guy's name? The guy you were just, the new guy you were just talking about? Josh Chrisman. Josh Chrisman. And Josh Chrisman knew Elvis Fields. Yes, that's correct. So that's another connection, okay? Are there any other connections between Elvis Fields and Brad Holder? Between Josh Chrisman and Johnny Messer, I don't recall any others. Okay, so let's back this up a little. Are you guys aware of what's referred to as the pig roast that has been spoken about for seven years? The pig roast. Are you guys aware of the rumor that a pig was indeed delivered to the CPS building on the 13th of February? Are you aware that Keegan Klein in a very detailed fashion described to Miss Howley Lowry 
the way that he would slaughter a pig, the tools used to slaughter a pig, and his fascination with the slaughtering of pigs? Are you aware that an implement was being searched for in the early days of the investigation regarding a certain type of implement that would be used in the slaughtering of a pig? Are you aware that at the Mears property right across the street from the entrance to the trails in Delphi, right across the street, nearly across the street from the cemetery where these girls were found near, that there is a butcher shop in which you could easily slaughter a hog. Are you also aware of the connection of several individuals that have been POIs over the years, specifically aligned with Garrett Kurtz and his crew, who all worked at Packers. Are you getting the connection here that something smells? Are you aware that the girls were primarily bloodless and that they were cut in a way very similar to the way that you would slaughter an animal to drain the blood. And by that, I mean the deep stab wounds in the uh, sides of the neck. So we're gonna back up a little, back to uh, line number 11 here. We're gonna, we're gonna back it up because it's worse. I mean, it's worth it. It's worth it. So we're, uh, so we were able, so this is Todd Click. We were able to connect Josh Chrisman. We knew that he was a semi-truck driver. Pause. Are you guys also aware of the pervasive rumor that has gone around for seven years that a truck driver was involved in the murder of Abby and Libby? Josh Chrisman, that he was a semi-truck driver that conducted deliveries for a company called Flynn Livestock that would transport hogs to different facilities. I know that Weichmann's pig farm in Delphi and then the Tyson plant in Logansport that they would make deliveries to. Elvis Fields kind of worked under the table at Flynn Livestock and he would get paid by the drivers to load and unload the semis, and he would periodically ride with the drivers to make deliveries. So Johnny Messer knew, what's this guy's name, the new guy that you were just talking about? Josh Chrisman. Josh Chrisman. Okay, and Josh Chrisman knew Elvis Fields. Yes. Johnny Messer, Josh Chrisman. Josh Chris, Chrisman, Elvis Fields. Okay, so that's another connection. Were there any other connections to Brad Holder between Elvis Fields and uh, Brad Holder? Between jo Josh Chrisman and Johnny Messer? I don't recall any others. It was a certain type of knife. It's a certain type of knife, okay, that uh, they were looking for. It depends on what you're asking for. They were looking for a certain type of knife that has a hook on the opposite side of the tip of the blade that's used for pulling the guts out of the hog. Okay. There's also another type of tool that's a, a tool that you use in the side of the neck to drain the blood uh, when you're specifically doing hogs. So there's two different tools depending on which one you're asking about. But uh, both of these, uh, Keegan Klein was fascinated with and described in detail. Okay, do you recall if there were any Facebook photos that you looked at where Brad Holder was following Elvis Fields or vice versa? There were some pictures on Elvis Fields' Facebook page and Brad Holder's Facebook page that were very similar in nature. What do you mean by that? There were pictures. 
There was pictures of sticks that were placed in different arrangements. I know that there was like a picture of a folding pocket knife that they each had. They each had similar pictures of trees. It was just the similarities were very odd. So could that be another connection between Brad Holder and Elvis Fields? We believe so, yes. Let's back that up. Let's back that up. There were pictures on Elvis Fields' Facebook that were similar in nature to Brad Holder's. What do you mean by that? There were pictures of sticks that were placed in different arrangements. Okay, so as I showed to you last week, I mean, last show. Actually, let's let's pull that up. Okay, just a moment. Just a moment, because we're not fucking around here. It's, it's worth... Uh, it's worth going to look at this. Hold on. One moment. See, this is all supposed to be a game. It's all supposed to be a game with these people. All right. Look at this. Now, you will notice that what Holder is doing here, he's taking very specific types of pictures. Okay? I would say a third of them a third of them are trees and stick formations that he would find in nature that he found intriguing and rune-like. Okay? So some of these photos would be sticks that he naturally found in these positions or trees that resemble runes, and he's fascinated, so he takes a picture. Okay? The other two-thirds of these are sticks that he has placed into specific runic configurations and then photographed. Okay. So what was Elvis Fields doing? He was duplicating these photos. He was mimicking the post of Brad Holder. He was taking sticks and placing them in similar arrangements. Okay. Well, well, geez. Well, what is this? And what is this? The similarities were very odd. Okay, so could that be another connection between Brad Holder and Elvis Fields? We believe so, yes. Did Elvis Fields ever admit to anybody else or say anything else that was suspicious or would show that he might have been involved in these murders? Mrs. Diener, judge, I'm going to object. Their motion is about a missing audio recording of a Brad Holder interview, and I'm not sure what the connection with Elvis Fields or how this is helpful to us with regard to their motion. How is this relevant to your motion? Judge Mr. McClellan, in his response to our motion, said that two things. Number one, that the, the missing document, the missing video, is not either exculpatory or material, u, materially useful to defense. What I am doing right now is laying down the foundation that at the end of the road, you will see, yeah, this is actually, it would actually be material useful to the defense based upon his investigation, number one. Number two, you will be finding that in a moment that, well, Mr. McClellan argued bad faith. You have to prove bad faith. Well, that's difficult to do. And part of what is happening here is you're going to learn that Mr. Click, that the law enforcement working on this case operated in bad fit, faith in that they refused to investigate. They tried to in conjunction with other evidence that I will be talking about. So we're gonna to get to this evidence then, says court, yes. Is that what you're telling me? Yes, then let's get to that evidence. Yes, shall we? I mean, it may not be through this witness, it may be through others. Okay, well, let's get to it, sir. Okay. Did Elvis Fields make any admissions that you know about being involved in, in this crime? Objection. I would like to ask that those admissions be made to him. Sustained. 
Judge, hearsay. There's a hearsay exception against interest. And that's if somebody says that I was involved in a crime, that would be against their interest. Okay, let's back it up because let's see with this insane, maniacal, uh, murder hiding attorney would was objecting to. Let's back it up a bit. Okay. You have to ask yourself. Why would you object to this? Did Elvis Fields ever admit to anybody else or say anything else that was suspicious or would show that he might be involved in the murders? Object. So you don't want us to know if or what Elvis Fields admitted to being involved in these murders. Secondly, you object again to the question, did Elvis Fields make any admissions that you know of about being involved in this crime, i.e. these murders? Object. Are you picking up what I'm putting down here? Are you picking it up? They don't want on the record anything to come to the surface about Elvis Fields' admissions about being involved in these murders. It'd be against their own interest I killed somebody. That would be, that's not hearsay. That's an exception to hearsay. The objection wasn't that it wasn't to this gentleman here. Oh, that's what I sustain. Okay, whatever that meant. Did, did Elvis, did you ever hear, hear Elvis Field say anything where he was involved in this crime as part of your investigation? Elvis did not say anything directly to me. No. Did he say anything to Kevin Murphy? There was, back in February of 2018, I believe Jerry Holman and Kevin Murphy interviewed Elvis Fields at the Rushville Police Department. And when Detective Murphy took Elvis back to his trailer, Elvis approached Detective Murphy and said, quote, hey, if, I, if my spit is found on those girls, and I've got a reason for why it's there. I'll be okay, correct? I mean, sure, sure. Richard Allen did this alone. Only Richard Allen. We're going to object to everything possible that uh, implicates anyone else whatsoever even though McClellan at one point said, we have reason to believe other actors are involved. No, 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 no. It's all Richard Allen, right? It's called railroad, railroading. Let's read that again. Elvis approached Detective Murphy and said, hey, if my spit is found on those girls and I've got a reason for why it's there, I'll be okay, correct? You see, Elvis Fields is not smart enough to know you don't say shit like that. Okay, after that type of information, do you know if that was relayed? If that was that part of what information, if you know, was relayed to Unified Command here to try to see if they'd be willing to get a search warrant for Elvis's, Elvis Fields' house? Yes. And that was, if I recall, that was part of the, well, there were some statements that Elvis had made to his sister because he's not smart enough to not do so that initially prompted the investigation into Elvis Fields. Okay, and that was Joyce Moffat or somebody else? That was a different sister. Okay, 
What did that part of your investigation reveal? Elvis had made some statements to his sister, Mary Abrams. I don't recall exactly all of the words that he used, but he had told Mary Abrams that he was going to go away for a while, that he had done something bad to some girls. He was on a high bridge that they had placed sticks on one of the girl's hair to represent antlers. That he had, he was in a gang and he had a brother now. He had a what now? Once again, object, says Diener. It's not bringing us back to Brad Holder. The court says, we're kind of wandering far afield here. You said you'd get to the evidence. Let's get there. Baldwin, okay, after Richard, well, let's just, how much stuff was out there in your opinion that would cause a good investigator to think Elvis Fields and Brad Holder was somehow connected to these murders? Okay, let's back that up. So what did she object to this time? Elvis's statements to his other sister, Mary Abrams. Okay, so first time. What does she object to first? Elvis Fields. Okay, first, first thing she objected to. We're going to read the up. Uh, see, this here is very important because it triggers objections. So let's pay attention to what is triggering objections here. First one, did Elvis Fields ever admit to anybody else or say anything else that was suspicious or would show that he might be involved or might have been involved in these murders? Object. Okay. Next one. Did Elvis Fields make any admissions that you know of about being involved in this crime? Object. Okay. Next one. Elvis had made some statements to his sister, Mary Abrams. I don't recall exactly all of the words that he used, but he had told Mary that he was going to go away for a while, that he had done something bad to some girls. He was on a high bridge, that they had placed sticks in one of the girls' hair to represent antlers, that he had, he was in a gang, and that he had a brother now. Object. So it's really feeling like the continued objections are coming at Elvis Fields, his admissions. Todd Click states, it was the belief of Detective Murphy, Detective Ferency, and I that there was a strong likelihood that Brad Holder, Patrick Westfall, and Elvis Fields had a strong involvement in the murders of the girls. Okay, so how did this investigation of your on your end wind down? My investigation came to an end when Detective Ferency was shot and killed in the line of duty. And then what happened after that? What did you do then, if anything, on the Delphi case? I did absolutely... Judge, may I object again? And be more specific in my objection. We're talking about a recording of Brad Holder on February 17th, 2017. All of this is years later. They have to show how we would know that this evidence is exculpatory in 2017 when the recording goes missing. In order to meet the threshold for material, materially exculpatory, we're not getting there. And it doesn't seem to be going in that direction. It's irrelevant to what was, was known in 2017 when the recording went missing. Again, Judge Mr. McClellan, respond to my motion. Citing case law that says, number one, you have to show that it, as Ms. Diener just said, that it's either exculpatory or the other word was materially useful to the defense. This is all foundational for what now I'm about to get into, which is what happened after he was done that he 
or what was done or what wasn't done. Bad faith, very difficult to prove. And that's what uh, we are going to be venturing into that territory. But also, it's going to show what could have been or what would have been on those missing videos would have been certainly useful to the defense, materially useful and or exculpatory. And that's so, and that's for the court to decide. Court sustains the objection. Did you have a chance? Uh, well, next, what did you then? What was the next time you did anything on the Delphi case? Todd Click says, I did nothing further after Detective Ferency was shot and killed, i.e. assassinated by Shane Meehan, potentially white supremacist. Former federal corrections officer. Well, what happens in the prisons with white boys? Question. <clears throat> after Richard Allen was arrested, what, if anything, did you do? Todd Click. I eventually contacted... Oh, I'm sorry. Did I uh, fail to turn the page? I eventually contacted a friend of mine, says Todd Click, who was a former prosecutor and was a criminal defense attorney. Why did you do that? Todd Click says, after Richard Allen was arrested, I was initially kind of shocked and confused. I read the affidavit, the probable cause affidavit for the arrest, and I felt like the investigative information that Detective Ferency, Detective Murphy, and I had compiled was more compelling than what was contained within the probable cause affidavit for Richard Allen's arrest. Let me stop there. Because Ruckus Rocks is one of the most gaslighting, bullshit, full of shit, asshole motherfuckers you ever come across. And I'll explain why. When this probable cause affidavit was released to the public, Ruckus Rock's first statement to me was that that was the weakest, most bullshit, baseless, poorly put together PCA he had ever seen. Well, because I was a very smart and very thorough person, I contacted Mr. Perry Freeman to get a second opinion. Mr. Freeman told me, Prof, that is one of the worst, poorly written, unbelievable PCAs that I've ever seen in my life. Matter of fact, it doesn't even reach the standard for PCA. After considering both of these opinions, I realized that both of these gentlemen had the feeling that this PCA was rife with problems and was so bad that they were both kind of shocked that it was able to convince a judge to issue uh, based. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so what did I do? I changed my opinion. I said, wow, well, that PC must really be shitty. If both of these guys are telling me the same exact fucking thing about how bad this PCA is. Well, remember, this is before any discovery was found by the... Uh, defense. So it's before any of us knew any of this. It's before any of us knew that Liggett lied, misrepresented witness witness statements, and twisted facts. It was before any of us knew how bad the problems were on the PCA. It was way before, okay? So way before any of us knew what the problems were, both of these individuals said to me, this was a horrible, weak 
piece of yay. Okay? But now, should you listen to Ruckus Rocks now? Oh, oh, Richard Allen is 100% guilty. He looks guilty. He looks like a child killer. Really? So what happened to the first impression that this was one of the worst PCAs you've ever seen and you've allegedly seen thousands in your life? What, what happened to that opinion? Was that before you got paid by the family? I mean, I'm trying to make sense of it. Because you certainly did a 180. You did a 180. You went from that's the worst, weakest PCA I've ever seen. I can't believe that the guy was arrested off of that. You went from that to he looks like a child killer. Mm -hmm. Nice one. Nice one. That's really, really shows your integrity, sir. But like I said, after reaching out to Mr. Freeman, I was thoroughly convinced that uh, what are the odds that both of these guys are going to say the same thing, that this PCA is bullshit. And then way later, way later, we discover why we discover that Liggett lied, Liggett misrepresented witness, state, witness statements, and Liggett twisted facts. Crickets, though. Crickets from the Patty family troll farm. Crickets. Total crickets. Let's listen to a third law enforcement officer's actual opinion. Once again, Mr. Click, after Richard Allen was arrested, I was initially kind of shocked and confused. I read the affidavit, the probable cause affidavit for the arrest, and I felt like the investigative information that Detective Ferency, Detective Murphy, and I had compiled was more compelling than what was contained within the probable cause affidavit for Richard Allen's arrest. So what did you do based on that thought? Well, I wasn't exactly sure what to do, so I reached out to a friend of mine who is a former prosecutor and was a defense attorney for advice on what I should do. And what did you do after talking with him? We decided that we would draft a letter to Mr. McClellan's office, and that's what we did. Oh, did you? Okay, I'm handling, I'm handing you what's been marked now as Defendant's Exhibit A. If I could get you to review that for me, and when you're done, let me know. Yes, this is part of the letter that was submitted to Mr. McClellan's office. Okay, and that was sent by certified mail? Yes, sir, it was. What date? It would have been sent in the mail on April 28th, 2023, which is almost a year ago, folks, almost a year ago. Who did you send it to? Mr. McClellan's office. What was your reasoning for writing this letter? Just to make sure that he was aware of the investigative work that Detective Murphy and Detective Ferency and I had conducted. Would you also say your, will I move to admit Defendant's Exhibit A? Defendant's Exhibit A offered. Ms. Diener. Judge, this letter refers to his report, and it is a letter from 2023, and he indicated that he began his participation in June of 2018, and the rules regarding the case law regarding a motion to dismiss for destruction of exculpatory evidence or even in the alternative, if that's potentially useful, determining whether the state acted in bad faith has to do with what was known at the time of the particular item of evidence being missing, lost, or destroyed. This is far beyond that time period, and our argument is that it's not relevant for purposes of this hearing. Oh, you bitch. Any response? If you're hiding evidence back in 2017, it might be something that you would do in 2023, and that's where this is headed.
Wow. Wow. That's what we call a dunk. That's what we call a dunk. One more time for those in the back. The stupid idiots all the way in the back. The gaslighting assholes all the way in the back. If you're hiding evidence back in 2017, it might be something that you would do in 2023. And that's where this is headed. So there's been no testimony of hidden, hidden evidence, Judge. Well, we're about to get into that. You keep telling me you're about to get into it, sir. It takes time, Judge. Sorry, I will. I'll show defendants A, admitted over objection. I'll think the objection goes to the weight. I will give this particular exhibit rather than its admissibility. Defendants, uh, exhibit A, admitted. Thanks. Thank God. Thank God. Okay. Thank God for that one. Let's pause here and let me say thank you to uh, Ms. Um, Ms. Treehugger496. Thank you. Uh, I'll give you a round of applause as well. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Ms. Treehugger496, for the support. As I mentioned to you all, it is badly needed. Please support this channel. We are suffering from a lack of support. Please continue to support this channel. It's a tough job out here in these streets. They have lied so long without being challenged that they aren't even adequate liars. That is interesting. Why did Click think Nicholas McClellan would not be aware? Welcome in, ACV. Welcome in. Keep your foot on the pedal prop. That's what we're doing. That's the plan. Round of applause for the defense and for uh, ACV and for Tree Hugger and Is a God Thing and Diamond Eyes, Digital, Tammy. I went from watching Gray Hughes to following the evidence as it presented itself. Thank God for the Frank's memorandum. Boom, pivotal moment for me. <laughs> Round of applause, Tammy Martin. God bless you, Tammy Martin. Round of applause. Round of applause. You poor girl. <laughs> Welcome in nobody nothing. Okay. Anyone interviewed the week after a murder would be exculpatory for anyone not arrested or even looked at for six years. Yeah, this Diener, she keeps saying it, it's, it's been so long and it has no meaning and blah, 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 right, right? She's totally trying to make it all go away. Yeah, well, guess what? If they deleted the entire first week of interviews, that's called hiding evidence and they knew what they were doing in 2017 in the first fucking week. I mean, come on, in the first six months, come on. Thank you, Gia, for coming a new member, new member here. Okay, thank you, Gia. Let's continue here. Let's continue. I, I just think that was worthy of a dunk there. Okay, so let's continue. We're almost done here. We're almost done. Yeah, Tammy Martin, thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Tammy Martin. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you. This is what I'm talking about, guys. We need the support. I don't like begging for it. I don't like telling you, but we have all these support pathways. Just thank you. God bless you for the support. It's tough out here in these streets. It's tough out here. All right. Thank you so much, Tammy and Gia and everyone. Okay. What did what did we expect with that name? Is she is she uh is she related to Benjamin Diener? That's impressive. Almost like you escaped the cult. <laughs> you did. The Great Gooch. <laughs> you escaped the you escaped the Great Gooch cult. Cult. The cult. Okay, let's keep on. Let's keep on keeping on here. Thank you everyone for so much. Let's keep on because this is look, this is good stuff. It's just difficult. It's difficult. They thought they could hide this forever. They thought they could hide this fucking shit forever. They really did. They really thought they could hide this forever. Okay. Mr. Baldwin, thank you, Judge. In this document, you say, I want to write. Okay. We're getting back to the letter here. Oh, my God. Uh, it's a God thing. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. You are appreciated. Well, God bless you and thank you. And please go watch. Everyone who hasn't seen the previous stream on the, you really have to pay attention. The symbolism at the crime scene okay if you have not seen the prior stream called symbolism at the crime stream 
a crime scene. Please go watch it. Please go watch it. It's it's look, my opinion, these girls are staged as tarot major arcana with runes placed on top of their tarot posturing. Please go watch my previous live stream called Symbolism at the Crime Crime Scene. You you owe it to yourself. Please do it. And and plus we had a beautiful guest named in light in the dark on and she's a wonderful and uh thank you guys so much it's a god thing you just thank you so much i bought a sweatshirt too still waiting for it to arrive i'll let you know when it arrives well let me know and take a picture please take photos i would love to see it what color did you get okay you just lurk and laugh well you guys lurk on this okay thank you so much again you guys are beautiful. Let's keep on. Let's keep on. Uh, okay, we're getting back to this document. Remember where we are. Todd Click authors a document to Nicholas McClelland, right? A year ago. A year ago. Okay, to M Nicholas McClelland. Here we go. I want to write to ensure you've been provided all of the information associated with investigative efforts for your use in this case and for disclosure to oppo opposing counsel as provided by law. Okay, is that right? That is correct. Why'd you do that? Heard the advice of my attorney, inf any information that was presented to the prosecutor's office should also be discoverable to any defense counsel. Okay, are you getting down? Are you getting, are you picking up what he's throwing down? Are you picking up what he's throwing down here? He wrote this letter to McClelland, certified mail, a year ago, in order to ensure that the defense also got it and that it's discoverable. You guys get that? Is that all you provided in the letter, the certified mailing that you sent to Nick McClelland? There was also a brief summary, uh, a brief summary of our investigative product. I'm going to hand you what's now being marked as Defendant's Exhibit B and ask you to review that. Tell me when you're ready. Yes, this is the investigative summary that was included with the letter to Mr. McClellan's office. Pretty much, uh, or if not at all, of what have you already previously testified is contained in Exhibit B. For the most part, yeah. Okay, so... That's a typo here. That's a typo. What it should say here in line number 12, look at line number 12, please. Line number 12 should say pretty much all, or if not all, of what you have already previously testified is contained in Exhibit B. For the most part, yes. Okay, move to admit Exhibit B. Defendant's Exhibit B offered. Ms. Diener, of course. States objects for the same reason. It's outside the scope of what's relevant to the evaluation of missing recording from February 17, 2017. Discovered missing that same year. I'll show B is admitted over objection. Again, it's the weight rather than admissibility. So thankfully, <laughs> thank you, Judge Gold. Thank you so much. Uh, the exhibit B admitted. Thank you. Uh, credit where credit is due. Credit given where credit is due, Judge Gold, thank you for admitting Exhibit A and B here. Exhibit A and B, both uh, the mailings to Nicholas McClellan a year ago, basically on April 28, 2023. Again, uh, so that was April the 29th that you sent this document deal detailing much of your investigation involving Brad Holder, Patrick Westfall, and Elvis Fields. Is that correct? Well, prior, I was pretty sure he said April 28th. So that may be an error on um, on Baldwin's part. But uh, Click says yes, that is correct. So did you hear from Nicholas McClellan on any t at any time during May of 2023? No, I did not. What about June of 23? Uh, did you hear from Nicholas McClellan at any time? No, I did not. What about July of 2023? Did you hear from Nick, Mr. McClellan then? No, I did not. What about August of 2023? Did you hear from Mr. McClellan then? I was contacted by Mr. Mullins 
of Mr. McClellan's office, and it was mid-August, I believe, of 2023. Tell me about that, okay? So mid-August, Mr. Mullen. He wanted to set up a meeting with me and Detective Holman and asked that I provide all of my investigative materials, which would include police reports, audio video recordings of interviews, and then told me that they would sit down with me to go over some of the evidence that they had against Mr. Allen to try to put my mind at ease. Put your mind at ease? Wow. 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 Sounds like they're trying to put water on uh, spray Mr. Uh, Click down with the hose, huh? Sounds like they're trying to spray, spray Mr. Click down with this water hose. Quiet his ass up to shut him up. Red flags. Red flags. Not bring us your shit so we can see if it applies to Mr. Uh, Allen or if it applies to the murders of Abby and Libby. No, 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 no. Come on over here and bring all your shit so we can know what it is and we can calm your nerves and put your mind at ease, spray some water on your ass, hit you with the hose, shut you up. I want to talk about some uh, videotapes of who, who, well, who, strike that. Did you do that when you arrived? Yes, I did. Okay, did Mr. McClellan ask you in May well, or anybody from law enforcement ask you to bring any of those items in in May of 2023? No, sir. Did they, anybody in law enforcement or in Mr. McClellan's office, ask you to bring any of those pieces of evidence, uh, videos of Elvis Fields and others in in June of 2023? No, sir. July of 2023? No, no, sir. Okay, but it was in August of 2023. Yes. So what did you do then? I went to ISP Post and met with Detectives Holman and Vito, I believe. What happened there? I provided them with everything I had. Wow. Okay, stop. Again, you know, I told you it's a deep dive. We can't go, we can't blaze through this. I have alleged that Mr. Vito and Mr. Holman and Mr. Uh, shit, the whole, I, I have alleged the whole ISP is fucking corrupt at this point. A whole ISP. I have alleged that not only did the Carroll County Sheriff's Office look the other way, I have alleged that the entire ISP has looked the other way. Okay? So let's go back to line number nine here. I went to the Indiana State Police Post and met with detectives, Mr. Holman and Mr. Vito, who I believe to be corrupt. I believe. What happened there? I provided them with everything that I had. I provided them with a thumb drive that contained all of the interviews that were conducted. I believe there was some cell phone data extraction that was included in that, like my audio and video interviews. Then I sat down with Detective Vito for approximately an hour or so and just gave, just kind of gave a brief summary of the investigative work that Detective Ferency, Detective Murphy, and I had completed. Did they seem interested in your investigative efforts? In my opinion, no. Well, you said you were there because you were, how, how, how is it that you phrased it? You were concerned? They, part of it was they were going on to show me evidence against Mr. Allen to help put my mind at ease. Did they do that? No, sir. But remember, this is Mr. Todd Click who had thoroughly investigated for more than three years, along with Ferency and Murphy, the entire connection between Messer, Westfall, Holder, Chrisman, Elvis Fields, and others. He went to the ISP to give them everything he had. Instead, they showed him how they believed Allen was involved and tried to put his mind at ease. After this meeting with Vito and Holman and whoever else you said, what then happened? I left the state police post. As I was walking out, I noticed Brad Holder sitting in the fucking front lobby. I went out 
on out to my car and drove back to Rushville. After you drove back to Rushville, what, how often, if ever, did anyone from law enforcement contact you about what you had just provided them? I was never contacted. Did you ever contact them? I contacted them. I contacted Detective Holman, and why did you do that? Shortly after the Franks Memorandum had been released, you remember, in September, the uh, 136 pages, as I affectionately call them? I was contacted by a friend of mine that stated a female by the name of Alicia Cole, who, who, was, who had had a child with Johnny Messer, had a cell phone of Johnny's that she believed I might be interested in. Were you aware during, your, uh, during the course of your investigation, before you kind of got off the investigation, of a phone that you would have liked to have had? Yes. Uh, we searched for several cell phones belonging to Johnny Messer that Johnny would have, had been using, uh, would have been using during the time that Abby and Libby would have been killed. We actually referred to that cell phone as the Goldilocks cell phone. We believe that there might have been information contained on that cell phone. Okay. So what did you do once you heard that somebody had contacted you about a cell phone that belonged to Johnny Messer? Did you say in 2017? That is correct. What did you do th then do? Here comes the bitch. Judge. May I run you my objection unless this Johnny Messer cell phone re relates somehow to Brad Holder? Yeah, it does. Sustained. Mr. Baldwin, I don't know where I can go, Judge. I mean, did you contact anyone about this phone to go from the law enforcement side to go pick up this phone with evidence that you thought might be on there from 2017? I contacted Detective Holman. Okay, and what happened? I checked with Alicia Cole, and when I spoke with Detective Holman, I explained to him the significance that we felt the cell phone provided. Detective Holman said that he would make arrangements to obtain that cell phone. Stroke it, stroke it. I contacted Alicia Cole and told her that Detective Holman from State Police would be contacting her to retrieve that cell phone. After approximately two weeks, I contacted Alicia just to make sure that the cell phone had been recovered by the state police, and it had not been. And then what happened? At that time, I contacted Brian Alvey, who's an investigator for the uh, criminal defense team. Advised him of the cell phone, and he went and retrieved the cell phone. It's going to be up to the defense to solve this case. It will be up to the defense of Richard Allen to solve this fucking case. And us. Are you familiar with Celebrite? And how once, uh, tell the judge what Celebrite is and what you know, how you know how to use it. Celebrite is a program that law enforcement uses to extract data from electronic devices. You can, for a cell phone, for example, you can recover data that is currently on the cell phone, and you can recover data that has been deleted from a cell phone. Okay, have you had a chance to look at the results from a phone dump from 2023? I briefly looked at it, yes. I want to hand you what's marked as Defendant's Exhibit C, or should be. Are you familiar with this thumb drive? Yes, I am. What was that, or what is that? This is a thumb drive that contains the extracted data from Patrick Westfall's cell phone. How much data is on there in terms of the dates? From what date to what date? There wasn't Miss Diener. Judge, may I interrupt the with a preliminary question? Yes. Did you already testify as to where this Westfall dump came from no i did not test fall to that i would object on foundation foundation where did you get the phone dump information from from you sir okay what i asked you to review that for me that's correct do you have a specialized training in celebrate 
I have not been trained on the Celebrite program. However, I'm very familiar with the reports that are generated from the cell phone extractions, but you're not trained. I've not been trained by the Celebrite company, no. And when you were in law for, when you were a law enforcement officer, did you have access to Celebrite equipment in order to operate that and to complete examinations with, with regard to a Celebrite dump? Click. When I was a detective, I was an investigator. I was an investigator for the Indiana State Police Crimes Against Children's Task Force. This is how you shut a bitch up. Oh, just one, one moment. <clears throat> All right, pardon me. Okay. Perk up your ears, please. I'm sorry. I know this is tedious. I know it's long. We're almost done. When I was a detective, I was an investigator for the Indiana State Police Crimes Against Children's Task Force. Any cell phone that we had that we were going to do a forensic examination on, we would take to the Indiana State Police Cybercrimes Unit. They were uh, they would extract the, that data and then they would provide me with the data that was extracted. No other questions. That's how you shut a bitch up. And sir, uh, that phone dump that you looked at today, that's what you have seen in other cases. That's the extraction. Yes, that's correct. What dates did Patrick Wells Westfall on his phone have that for that extraction? The first date of significant extracted detail that I saw was on August 12 of 2023. What about the last date? I did not review that. Okay, apologize. I may have uh, forgot to turn that page. Okay, we'll move on. Did you see anything in July of 2023? Text, emails, photographs, anything like that? No, I didn't. What about, let's get back to April. Anything in April? No, sir. Anything in January? The court, excuse me, would counsel approach, please? Then there's sidebar conference conducted. None of this is in your motion. Not one shred of this is in your motion. Your motion detail uh, deals with a document dated February 17th, 2017. It is an FBI report of Brad Holder. And on the same day, strike that February 19th, the Patrick, the interview of Patrick Westfall. This is what you have complained about in your motion, right? None of this is in your motion. Mr. Baldwin, this is the evidence to support the motion and to counteract Mr. McClellan's argument that there's bad, that there's not bad faith, and that this is this is very specific, Mr. Baldwin. You did not incorporate any of this information into your motion to dismiss. Ms. Deaner, may I speak up a two-hour response? Sure. Our response about bad faith, we don't even get to bad faith unless they show that it's exculpatory. And then in the alternative, that it's potentially useful. We haven't even gotten to potentially useful for the recording that's missing of Brad Holder. So our response about bad faith is after we get through whatever, uh, whether we're in the category of materially exculpatory, which is the heading of their motion, or potentially useful, we aren't at either one. Mr. Baldwin, what would you learn, Judge? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please, uh, please forgive. What you would learn, Judge, is that Patrick Westfall, his phone, he brought his phone into the police at their request. And the phone that he brought to them only had four days, knowing that he was going there, that he brought a phone with no data on it, pretending he knew what was going on in there, i.e. it's either scrubbed or he brought in a new phone. And that goes toward Judge showing that he had a predisposition or he was trying to hide evidence. And when he's trying to hide evidence, that then goes towards, well, if he was trying to hide evidence in 2023, that he was doing back uh, that back in 2017. Okay, the court says, then perhaps you should have pled that because you have not pled that in this particular motion that I'm holding in my hand. Here's Ms. Diener. And if I may say, Judge, the content of the motion with regard to Patrick Westfall says that they had been given a narrative and there is no recording, recording and they are speculating as to whether we're not telling the truth about whether there's a recording. So I have a witness here to testify to that effect. So our preparation has been for the allegation of a dismissal based on destruction of exculpatory evidence. It is specific to recording of Brad Holder on February 17th of 2017.
that, that was discovered missing or lost in August of 17, and that's their time window. The court, and I have given you a lot of leeway, none of this, none of this testimony, very little of this testimony deals with your motion to dismiss for destroying exculpatory evidence as you pled. You can stand there and tell me all you want, but this is what you pled, and I'm not hearing any evidence about it. In order to win on that, we don't, this is, we don't have to plead everything that's going to happen in a trial. I mean, the no, but you do in a motion to dismiss. You have to put the other party on notice, which you did, and they filed a particularized response to it. Baldwin, well, if you're not going to allow me to do it, I can offer, do an offer to prove, and we can move this hearing along a bit more quickly. You can do an offer to prove, that's fine, yes. As it relates to Patrick Westfall and his phone, the missing, as it relates to, to Brad Holder, what you have in your pleading. Brad Holder is the missing interview. That's what's destroyed. Well, Patrick Westfall too, says Mr. Baldwin. No, he does not have a recording. This is about a lost recording. You've been given the narrative of Patrick Westfall. There is no recording. That's the point. You're alleging. That's the point. There's not a recording. Then comes in attorney Luttrell. That's not destruction of evidence. Your dismissal is based on destruction of evidence. Yeah, all right. So let's get to that. Okay. And if you want to do an offer to prove, do an offer to prove. Sidebar is concluded. I'll do an offer to prove, says Baldwin. All right, let's move on to Brad Holder. You said you saw Brad Holder outside the interview room, correct? When you left. I saw him in the lobby of the state police post. What kind of questions do you, what do you expect state police to be asking Brad Holder in an interview as an investigator? Objection, judge, speculation sustained. I'm handing you what's been going to be marked as defendant's exhibit D. Can you identify that for me? Yes, this is a thumb drive that contains the audio recording of an interview conducted with Brad Holder. Did you get a chance to review that? Yes, I did. Move to admit defendant's exhibit D. Ms. Diener, I have a couple more questions, Judge. Mr. Click, what date is this interview from? August 30th, 2023. State would object based on relevance with regard to a missing recording from uh, 2017. What is the subject of this motion? I mean, which is the subject of this motion? Mr. Baldwin says, this is a Brad inter Holder interview, Judge, that can be compared to the transcripts that are memorialized. One page. A hundred words or something like that. Memorialization of the 2017 missing videotape. So I think that it's certainly appropriate and relevant. Miss Dean or Judge, I'm sorry. Can you restate how that's relevant? I'm missing the connection. Baldwin, where well, there's a missing video in 2017. And then the state followed up with an interview in 2023. And what's contained in here, which if anything is different, that's in here versus over in 2017. That would show that the missing evidence has value, so that's the relevance. Ms. Diener says, Judge, the evaluation of the value of missing evidence, again, the case law, which I'm sure the court's well familiar with, that is both cited in both the defendant's motion and the state's response, make it very clear that with regard to missing evidence, the evaluation is specific to the time during which the evidence went miss missing. That's in 2017. This interview, 2023, is not relevant to that time frame. Again, we're way beyond what the law requires for a motion to dismiss for destruction of exculpatory evidence. Your objection is well founded. I will show it and not admit D. Judge, if what's contained in the memorialized transcript or report from 2017 has different information than what is contained in the 2023 interview, how can that, I don't understand how that cannot be relevant. Based on your pleading, sir, is not relevant. I will offer to prove then, if that's okay, I will summar summar summarily detail what Mr. Click would have testified to and what the exhibit would show. Is that okay, Judge? Yes, make an offer to prove. Okay, here we go. Thank you. Uh, what would you learn from Mr. Click and his, I'm sorry, what you would learn from Mr. Click and his review of this document or exhibit that Brad uh, West, the 2023 videotaped interview, as well as the videotaped interview itself is this. Okay, listen here. 
Brad Holder was never asked a single question about Elvis Fields. Brad Holder was never asked a single question about Johnny Messer. Brad Holder was never asked a single question about what he and his ex-wife, Amber Holder, said. Uh, Amber Holder said that Brad Holder confessed to, that Patrick Westfall was involved in the case and was involved in the murders. Okay, let's back that up. Let's go back. Brad Holder was never asked a single question about what, he, what his ex-wife, Amber Holder, said, which was that Brad Holder confessed that Patrick Westfall was involved in the case and was involved in the murders. That Brad Holder was scared of Patrick Westfall. All of that would be missing. Also, you would find out that in the 2023 interview, Brad Holder claims that he met Abby one time, but in the 2017 memorialized paper, he never met her. All of that. Okay, so I know I, I, I'm rushing so much to get through this that it, it's difficult for me because uh, in the attempt to rush through it, I'm not able to make the points I would like to make. And, and there, there are some points that I'm wanting to make. Okay. So the point is, uh, one point here, before all of the bullshit. Okay, so what happened, they tried to shut this down. They tried to shut down a bunch of stuff. So let's back it up a bit. So what we what we were discussing initially, right? Alicia Cole. Let's remember this, Alicia Cole. Alicia Cole has a phone, right? Who's Alicia Cole? She's the baby mama of Johnny Messer. Okay, so let's let's check. Let's do some fact check real quick. Check ourselves. This Alicia Cole was Johnny Messer baby mama. She had Johnny's cell phone. She wanted to give it to Popo. Okay. They contacted Popo. Popo Jerry Holman strokes off Alicia Cole and the defense and says, and Todd Click, and says, yeah, we're going to get that phone from Alicia Cole. We're going to get Messer's phone. We're going to get this Goldilocks phone from Messer. What happens? Holman never goes get the phone. Neither does anyone else with uh, Indiana State Police or Carroll County. So what happens? Defense gets hold of the phone. Thank God. Thank God. So it's God working because maybe had prosecution or, or Jerry Holman gotten hold of this phone, it would have been deleted. It would have been deleted. It would have been deleted. It would have been missing. It would have been missing. It would have been missing. It would have been lost. It would have been lost. It would have been lost. Okay. So maybe it was God intervening in uh, putting a douchebag like Jerry Holman uh, as a stumbling block to the, 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 the deletion of this Goldilocks phone. Because instead, uh, Johnny Messer, baby mama, hands off this phone to the defense where it's now safe. Okay. Then we're discussing a phone of Patrick Westfall. Okay. Then we're discussing a recorded interview of Brad Holder. All extremely pertinent information. Deny, 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 object, object, object. Get what's going on. And remember, what was going on with Elvis Fields? 
Okay, so think way back in, in the show earlier, an hour ago, when we were discussing with Elvis Fields. Every time his involvement or his potential confessions, et cetera, anything implicating his involvement, uh, object, object, object. Right? You see a pattern here? You see a pattern? Do you see a pattern? Okay, let's get uh, let's get on over here to this. Uh, we're going to get over to this uh, demon for the state, demon for the state who uh, doesn't want to know anything about the Delphi murders, although they are prosecuting the Delphi murders. They don't want to know anything about the Delphi murders. Judge, I, re I renew my objection. Of course you do. The statements made by counsel with regard to Brad Holder not being questioned about Fields, Messer, or the ex-wife at all is all conjecture as to whether that information was even helpful to the police. Hello? Again, these people are not on the inside of this investigation, and they're making an evaluation from the outside and transposing what Mr. Click knows from reviewing interviews that have been provided in defense or through his own investigation and its relevance as to what law enforcement agencies knew in 2017 with regard to the interview of Brad Holder on February 17, 2017. And the time period then, and when the interview recording was lost, it's a very specific time frame. It's their motion. I don't understand why we're so far beyond it. But I'd appreciate your consideration. Baldwin says, part of the evidence is also we did not receive any of those videos for 10 months after they were owed us, three months, almost four months after McClellan and his office was provided this documentation from Mr. Click, telling him we have all of this evidence from other suspects. I think it's all relevant, but I will move on. Please do. Actually, that's all the questions I have. Okay, so let's pause here. Let's pause here. All right. Oh my. Whew. All right. Let me uh, just say hello to everyone. ACB, thank you so much. I see you. Uh, ACB, send a super chat here. I just want to say thank you. Thank you, ACB. Thank you. I am praying for justice too. Thank you very much, ACV. Uh, Gia, I don't remember what color, but I'll send you a pic. Oh, well, that would be great. Email. Email. Yeah. 63 likes. No, 63 watching. Now 71. 35 likes. Please give a like. Yes. Okay. Just uh, checking in with the chat before I continue here. We're almost done. Elephant in the room, right? I hope Click made copies of Elvis's information. That stuff is lost, burned, buried, gone. Yeah, I'm sure he has it all. I'm, sh I'm sure the defense now has it all, too. Doug and ISP are definitely corrupt, says Tree Hugger. His nonsense may be suspicious, but his reply to the reporter to hide behind the judge signing the PCA of Richard Allen was the final evidence I needed. Yeah, and there's even more final evidence you'll be learning about in the future because there's the, the, the more recent events will leave your jaw on the floor. Well, they can arrest Elvis Fields just based off his confession. I mean, he puts himself there and he confesses. Yeah, because he's not smart enough to not implicate himself. Hey, guys. What if the killer's phone was dumped in Vegas? I still want to know if the defense has been given the evidence the prosecutor is planning to use to establish time of death. Yeah, I bet you they're waiting until the last minute and they're going to drop a huge bomb on the defense. That's what they're going to do, you know, and they're going to get away with it. All right. What if Kelsey cleaned up after the drop off?
Forgot to add to chat that Keegan Klein worked at his uncle's pig farm for a short time when he lived with his mom when the prof was talking about that. Yeah, when I when he in detail discussed his weird demonic obsession with slaughtering hogs and how it's almost like a sexual bent to it. Uh, I was it was very clearly explained to me, including his explanation of the wounds you would make and the feelings and also the explanation of uh, the tools involved. So, you know, you don't know that side of Keegan Klein. That's why what Holly did was extremely valuable. You make him comfortable where he talks, which is what he did. I'm not sure if I did it right, Prof, but I had a $10 cash app, app to you. Should be, oh, thank you for a baby daddy. Thank you very much. I'll check. Thank you so much for that. Based on goals past rulings, you'll probably let Nick enter evidence that has not been, per that's what I'm getting at. Yeah, that's exactly. What I'm saying is they're going to wait till last minute. They're going to drop shit out of the blue and she's going to let them get away with it. <clears throat> Okay. You sent two. Thank you. Kelsey supposedly dropped the girls off at 149. Yes, yeah, supposedly, but uh, the FBI said approximately 1 p.m. Never forget that the FBI warrant written by Nicole Robertson says approximately 1 p.m. Those girls, at least from the cell phone, end up dropped off near 300 to 575. Yes, we are reading the testimony of of the most important investigator. Like this is what I'm getting at. This shit right here, this is the most important thing you've heard other than the Frank's memorandum. This is you're getting from the inside. I'm so proud of Baldwin and Rossi. They are men of integrity and fearless in this case that seems to has have had so many suspicious deaths. Yes, and they may end up being the ones who solve this case. So those two individual interviews don't equate to 70 hours of missing interviews. Nope. All of the family and witnesses on the trails would be who they logically would have talked to. We'd love to go back to those days, but the cops lost all the evidence within the first fucking week. Yeah. This is the process by which his attorneys walk that back. Yeah, at least we get to know what click found. We know Ferency was assassinated probably because of this. And um, Murphy is uh, crickets. So. Kelsey showers, drop off the victims, cleans boyfriend truck, showers again. Delphi law enforcement remind me of the police in Uvalde that won't protect children. All right. Cody and Derek are off limits. So is the shack. Cody, Derek, and the shack. Nancy Drew 101, welcome in. You're looking forward to sharing something. I don't I don't know at this point what you're talking about. <laughs> what do you mean, Amy? I'm going back in time quite a ways. So. They're not going to get away with it. The world is watching. The world will never stop. I'm chuckling at the flashback of Prof performing his douche intuition. Oh, uh, let, let me see if I can get him in here. Uh, hold on. Uh, douche. Hey, douche. Yeah, so see, uh, Richard Allen killed the girls. He's a baby killer. He's a baby killer. Okay, tree hugger four nine six. Tree hugger 
496. Thank you. Chuckling at the flashback. Douche intuition. Douche crew. Hey, what's up, douche crew? Kelsey and Mike Patty. ISP says they have changed since the murder. Oh, family bastards. Yeah, we don't do that here. We don't do that here, you family bashers. Anybody got any interesting screenshots of the family bashers? I am so blazed right now. Look at the family bashers. I just can't handle you guys. Kelsey, sweet. Let me call Becky. Becky, yeah. Hey, Becky. What should I say? I was going to make another uh, thumbnail with Richard Allen's face. Uh, This time I'm going to actually have him cutting one of the girl's throats. I'm like, I'm going to Photoshop and paste his face on some actors who are like, who are like acting and pretending to cut the throat of a young girl. And I, you know, do you think, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll definitely, definitely, I'm definitely gonna paste his face on uh, some actors slicing the throat of a girl. And I'm gonna use that for the next live and, uh, you know, maybe we can get this guy in prison and uh, make this go away for you guys. I know. Well, yeah, thanks for the cash app. Thank you for that. I mean, uh, you know, got to pay rent. Thanks, Beck. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. Tell Mike I love him, too. Tell Mike. I know. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I'll, you know, I'll just, I'll put his little face on these actors and uh, I'll make it real gory. I'll try to find a gory scene where there's lots of blood. You know, really make him look like a bloodthirsty killer. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Becky. I appreciate that. I mean, you know, you know, you know, I do it for you guys, and and the rent payment. And thank you. Tell Mike thanks. And, uh, you know, it's due on the uh, 14th of next month too. So make sure that's in on time. But, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, douche crew. All right, douche crew, Becky. Okay. I'm out of here. Okay, apologize, guys. I had to kick this asshole. There was this guy. I I don't know. He was kind of slow, but I kicked him out of my chair. I don't know. I found him sitting in my chair. I just went to the restroom. Come fucking douche uh, sitting in my chair. Surprise, uh, Greg Gooch wasn't here, too, sitting on his lap. Uh, but, yeah, let's. Okay. I believe the reason that Nick originally wants those mad red- records now is because they want to declare Richard incompetent to stand trial. That's the only move left. Yeah, because uh, when see what they're going to find out is that the experts are going to say those confessions don't matter because the Odinist guards uh, were literally threatening to kill him and his f- entire family. You know, they were threatening to kill his wife and his daughter. So, uh, yeah, false confession because it was compelled by the abuse and the shock vest of the Odinist literally guarding him. Hey, thank you, Curtis. Curtis Hinkle, uh, 10 bucks, super chat. Thanks for your thoroughness. Well, thank you for your super chat, uh, Curtis. Ho- hopefully you guys are okay with the comedic relief. I mean, this thing stresses me so much. I, I think we got to do something uh, a little off the cuff just to uh, take a breather because we're about to get into cross-examination. Jesus, man. <clears throat> okay. Oh, yeah, you'll be hearing that soon enough. You'll be hearing that soon enough, uh, Amy and others. Okay, guys. Thank you so much, Curtis, again. Okay. All right. 
Number 49. What is number 49? Welcome in everyone who's coming in late. Welcome in the latecomers. Uh, you guys are tardy. Uh, you'll be in detention on Saturday. Detention Saturday morning for all of you. <clears throat> Smoking that good, good. Why was Cody asked to move out of the house soon after? Ooh. Okay. Oh, I see we have some trolls in here. I see we have some trolls in here. Monday, get the fuck out of here. What are you doing, Monday? Are you are you just trying to gaslight? <clears throat> Don't worry, I'm going to click on your profile so I can go over to your page and figure out who you are. Because it sounds like you're uh, trying to gaslight me at this point. I don't like it. All right. <laughs> Can I get some of that good, good? <laughs> Deesh. Okay. All right. So, uh... all right, guys. So let's get back to it. We've got to get serious again. Got to get serious again. They don't want this to go to trial. No, they don't. No, they don't want this to go to trial. Come on. That's why they wanted him to kill himself. They wanted someone to, to kill him. They wanted him to die. Or they wanted him to, uh, to plea. And now since none of that has happened, now they want to declare him unfit. Okay. All right, guys. I'm out of here. Let me... Uh, I mean, I'm not out of here. <clears throat> the conversation is out. I'm out of the chat. We're back to reading. Let's hurry up and finish this. Oop, wrong one. <clears throat> All right. All right. Let's see. This We'll make it quick because we'll get out of here. We're almost out of here. Okay. Here comes cross-examination of Mr. Click. Mr. Click, in 2023, you were no longer with law enforcement. That is correct. And you wrote a letter to the prosecutor about this investigation that you knew had been going on since 2017. That is correct. And you actually participated in it at the request of, you described it being Ferency and Murphy. Is that correct? That is correct. And so if you prepared investigative materials and collected evidence and they were in your uh, were your connection to this investigation, why would they not have been given all of your information so that it was forwarded on to the Unified Command? That's a stupid-ass question, isn't it? They were provided with everything that was completed. Why didn't you do that? No, I did provide them with that information. <clears throat> you gave it to Ferency and Murphy? Ferency and Murphy, yes. Okay, so as long as Ferency and Murphy passed it along, because you guys were work, all working together, there'd be no reason to think they didn't have it, correct? That is correct. You make statements about Mr. Holder and Mr. Westfall wearing Vinlander t-shirts. Does that mean something? Why do you know it's a Vinlander t-shirt? Well, what a fucking cunt this is. Because the t-shirt said Vinlander across the chest. You see what she's trying to do? She, she's trying to discredit this guy who's undiscreditable. <laughs> you can't discredit this guy. How do you know it's a Vinlander t-shirt? It fucking says Vinlander and they're all wearing it. Do you know, I mean, you said you know, you've known Elvis Fields for a long time. Yes, I have. Is he lo a local in your area? Yes, he is. Uh oh, what am I? What am I doing here? Right page. Hold on, I I messed up. There we go. So we're at line number 21. What, what's the mental capacity of Mr. Fields? I know he did not complete high school. He has, does he have diminished mental capacity? That I do not know. Have you had contact with him? Yes, I have. 
Often, yes, I have. I know he's not a very smart individual. As far as if he's been diagnosed with any type of intellectual disability or anything like that, I'm not aware. No other questions, Mr. Baldwin? Re-exam. Okay. Mr. Baldwin says, did you ever run into anybody in your time as a detective that had low mental capacity that committed crimes? Yes, sir. Serious crimes? Yes, sir. Thank you. I did not want to supplement my previous order to prove with uh, judge, if I may, then I will be done with him. Go ahead. Also, would would you find that? Oh, I'm I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, also, you would find that on this videotaped interview of Brad Holder, he is not asked about why he and Patrick Westfall were no longer friends, at this, as described by Amber Holder, who said that it had something to do with a ritual gone bad in a forest, in a forest by a river. With that, I am done with this witness. Again, the state would object that it was not known to law enforcement at the time that the video went missing. That's the reason that we're here. And your objection is well noted. You may step down, sir. Thank you. Would you give the exhibit over to the court reporter, please? I'm free to go, Your Honor. I didn't subpoena you. Okay. He's asking if he's released. He's released from the defense. Okay. Call Amber Holder. Okay, we're done with that. So what we'll do next, um, the next show we will be taking from here. Okay, the next tomorrow, we will be covering the uh, Amber Holder. But we'll be covering Amber Holder. I'd like to thank you all for your patience. I understand that uh, this is a difficult laborious you know when you come to my show it's kind of like going to a class you know that's why i called it, i did not name myself the prof but i was labeled the prof and uh and i think i kept it because and uh and and used it for the name of the channel because it suits it when you come here we're basically going to class we're sitting down we're thoroughly reviewing things or third and if we're not reviewing we're discussing uh I believe highly in the uh, Socratic method, and uh, and that's what we do here. So it's often laborious, just like it would be laborious to go to a two or three hour class and sit there for your lecture and discussion. Uh, it is what it is. And for all of new people and trolls coming in, uh, gaslighting and all the other things, let me just say this, okay? I've got 500 fucking hours. Of material on this channel if you're coming in here gaslighting my uh, specific presentation I take it as an insult because what you need to do is understand that what you're coming in talking about I guarantee you it's already been covered months or a year ago so all you would have to do is if you want to learn about some of the things that you're bringing up and you want to see what's been discussed Go back into any one of the prior 85 Let's Talk Delphi programs or the other 50 or so uh, various programs. You know, we've definitely got like close to 150 lives, all of which are three hours long or more. And uh, it's a lot of information. So if you're coming in wanting to discuss something that we're presently not discussing, uh, hey, all I can say is, We've been there, done that, and it's it's still there for you. Uh, every single show, from show number one, the very first show, to this very last, uh, most recent show, it's on the internet for you to go back and watch. So we don't have to discuss what you want to discuss, when you want to discuss it, especially when we're doing a program. And right now, our program has been focusing on Mr. Click's testimony on March 18th, and that's what we were interested in. We have prior covered uh, 20 hours of the Frank's Memorandum. Okay, this Frank's Memorandum, why is it of value? Because it is the closest thing that we can get to the inside of the investigation and the inside of discovery. This is why we spent at least 20 hours going through it in detail, and is why we just spent the past two and a half hours going through this uh, testimony of Mr. Click, because he was an investigator, 
And uh, not only is his role in that way important, it uh, perfectly aligns with the Frank's memorandum. So now we're looking at 23 hours of uh, deep dive into some of this. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it is a lot and it is sort of tedious, but it's necessary because the more that you look at this, the more you have to ask the question, why in the fuck was Elvis Fields not arrested? Why was he not looked at appropriately? Why was Johnny Messer, Patrick Westfall, the Vinlanders, Why were they not? You explain to me. The, the further you look into this, what what do you see? Okay. What do you see when you look into this? American Guard, Brian James, McGinley, Chrisman, Messer, Westfall, Holder, Fields. You have a man who's somewhat mentally challenged. So his filter, his intelligence as far as a filter to know what to apply and what to not apply is very challenged. So he doesn't know to not ask the officer if he spit on the girls and he can explain it. Is it going to be cool? Okay, Because he's not in cuffs yet. He doesn't know to shut his mouth. He doesn't know to not tell his sisters that he was there on a high bridge that he saw two girls murdered, that he and others put sticks on the girls, that uh, one of them was a troublemaker named Abby. He, he didn't know to not try to give information to his sisters because they would eventually tell law enforcement, which happened under polygraph examination and was confirmed by a woman who subsequently, we believe, was murdered by arson which is the most common method of murder of these guys. If you follow this contingent of people, you will see that arson is their primary modus operandi of, of assassination or murder. So looking into all of this does not mean that Richard Allen has nothing to do with it. It doesn't. What it means is that whatever Richard Allen had or did not have to do with it, that's one thing. But what's extremely concerning is Elvis Fields was the weak link in this chain, didn't know what to or what not to say, ran his mouth and has opened this window into this group, which appears to have some connection to this, and which law enforcement appears to have not given a single fuck about and has turned the other way. Still turning the other way. Okay, because remember, when Messer's baby mama tried to give the phone, Holman says, yeah, I'll give you the phone. I'll go get the phone. Holman doesn't give a shit about Messer's phone. They don't give a shit about American Guard. They don't give a shit about the Vinlanders. They don't give a shit about Patrick Westfall. They don't give a shit about anyone else other than railroading Richard Allen. And hey, I want Richard Allen to go to trial. I really do. You know why? Because I want to know if he was involved or not, what proof exists. But you know what else I want out of it? I want to know who else was involved. Remembering that even McClellan, even Liggett, and even Lesenby, all three at one point have said that at least someone else, one or more, are involved. There are other parties involved. All three have alleged that. Well, that's your fucking unified command right there. Unified Command knows that there are others involved. So why pretend at this point that they're not and that it's solely Richard Allen and he's a lone wolf? Can you explain that to me? Can you explain that?
Yes, we have covered almost every stone unturned. That's what I'm saying. And it's all in the log. Go back and watch any video you want. We go over every single corner of this case. So we learned that Click is a man of full of integrity and intelligence is willingly testifying for the defense. Yes, and thank God that uh, that uh, Messer's baby mama gave that phone. The Goldilocks phone? What does Goldilocks mean? Yeah, and this is pertinent. And the, the thing is, this is on the record. Okay, what I just read, it's on the record. This is not hearsay. This is not like fantasy world. We're making it up out of thin air. This is coming from the record, from the investigation. Hello, just like the uh, 136 pages did. Welcome in. Welcome in, Meow. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for coming into the chat. Everyone lurking, please join the chat. You're welcome in. We're going to be closing it out. So come in now. Sad state of American judicial system and law enforcement really depresses me. Courts, cops, politicians at all are rotten to the core. Look at the phony lawsuits against the former president. Hey, meow. <clears throat> Pardon me. Because he has loyalty to his brother, Ferency, who's murdered over this, I am confident. Remember, Shane Meehan was a former correctional officer. Where do the white supremacists have the greatest hold? In, 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 to name me a single institution. What type of institution? What category of institution do the white supremacists have the greatest hold in? I'll wait. I'll watch the chat. I'll watch the chat. What institution do the white supremacists have the greatest stranglehold on? It's the, pre it's the prison. It's a prison, the prisons, the, the, the corrections, departments of correction nationwide, okay? Federal, state, local, Shane Meehan, guns down. He baits out Ferency and guns him down in broad daylight, not giving a fuck. Drives himself to the hospital, gets stitched up. We'll be learning from his trial as well. There are two suspicious deaths of employees at the Marathon gas station. Yes. And there's a suspicious death of Miss Stephanie Thompson, who is the person who would have great, 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 great knowledge of the Delphi case because of her role as a polygraph examiner. Yes, Click is is upset. I mean that Ferency was gunned down. I respect people do that, that do the right thing despite the consequences. He was close to Ferency, and I'm sure he was deeply impacted by his assassination. Everything will be revealed. Sorry for Pitts. It's you. Hey, look, you guys hit the uh, hit the little bell. Okay, hit the little bell and put it to all. I'm sorry, guys. Hit it to. Bell, click all under the bell, all, and hopefully you get them. I know people always complain, no notification. <clears throat> Prisons, yeah, exactly. Thank you, guys. See, I'm kind of behind. Yeah, the federal, the federal Department of Corrections. It's where it festers. Okay, the gangs fester in the prisons. They come out even more hardened than before. <clears throat> and Chris Mathis wanted to talk about prison. Chris Mathis uh, prison. Chris Mathis wanted to talk about a lot. Remember, it's Garrett's story to tell, but I'll tell you what I seen. I'm not doing that. Look what happened to Delphi. I know of two others as well. There's also an ISP trooper and her daughter burned. 
Well, that's Stephanie Thompson. Is that who you're talking about? Let's bring it back to the, uh, before we go, before, before we go, let me do, let me do this. This is what we're talking about here. For any, anyone unfamiliar with this case, Abby and Libby were two teenage eighth grade girls from Delphi, Indiana on October, on, I mean, I'm sorry, on 13 February, 2017, they allegedly went for a walk on a public trail and were found murdered the next day, not far from their last known location. And here's what they look like. And here's you got this guy. I showed you this earlier. Sheriff Tony Liggett did not intentionally or recklessly omit evidence or lie about evidence on the in the probable cause affidavit to support the search warrant in an effort to mislead the judge. Although he added the word bloody, he changed the color color of clothing. He turned a 1965 Mercury Comet into a contemporary modern Ford Focus. We had multiple law enforcement officers advise us that that PCA was one of the worst PCAs they have ever seen in their careers. But Nicholas McClellan would have you believe that not only did Liggett do nothing wrong, but Liggett also did not try to set up Richard Allen or try to stack the deck, okay? There's no way a Mercury Comet looks like a Ford Focus. There's no way muddy and bloody means muddy. There's no way blue means tan. Liggett Lesenby and McClelland all at some point said there was more than one involved in these murders. What happened to that now? What happened to that? Well, guys, uh, I am tired, but I'm so glad to be able to share this time with you. It was really great, uh, really listening to Todd Click's words and understanding some of his feelings. Uh, it's, it's extremely beautiful that that happened and that we now have uh, the ability to uh, read it, listen to it, understand it. It's a gift, just like the 136 pages were a gift. And uh, you'll have many people out here in these uh, ghetto-ass streets trying to tell you that it's all bullshit. Okay? It's all bullshit is what they will say. But what they will not say or admit is that, yes, it all came from discovery, which means from the investigation, which means it's been vetted and it actually has substance and it, there was reason for these guys. Why do you think that these guys were some among the very first interviewed? Do you think that's just by chance? I mean, these guys were the very first guys interviewed. Oh, but everything disappeared. Elvis posted shortly after his name came up. People were accusing him in one of his posts. One of his friends told him not to say anything more. Yeah, because he's not really smart enough to know to shut his mouth. Welcome in, Jay Marsh, whoever you are. Thanks for joining. Okay. Yes, hello, Jay Marsh. 
Liggett is not going to tell the truth on the stand. Or were you kicked off the floor? Yeah, poor Maya, Stephanie Thompson's daughter. These guys burn people alive. It's what they do. I mean, it's beginning to look like possibly what happened in Flora, but we don't want to talk about that either, do we? These people, oh yeah, oh yeah, all the evidence has disappeared? Oh, didn't know that. Didn't know that. Didn't know that. So, you know, this is what these guys do. They, uh, they've been doing it for so long, but guess what? They did it before the days of social media. And you remember how I consistently say this is a social media case. It started as one and it's going to finish as one. This is a social media case. It will be solved because of social media both on both ends this is not going away no matter what happens to richard allen uh the world will never stop looking at this whose sister was it who lent the car to her brother and several washings to remove the the uh, blood you mean megan allen are we talking about uh megan allen's car or the one she was driving the entire storage locker containing evidence was destroyed in 20. What? Uh, we'll need, we need to have you on probably discussing that, uh, Meow. I didn't know about that destruction of evidence, but I think that's one we probably want to blast out into the universe. This is what they do. They delete, destroy, hide, lie. This is what they do. Whose sister was it who lent the car to her brother? And it took several washings to remove the blood. Yeah, I'm trying to remember that. Wait, I'm trying to remember, but I remember the story about the several washings of blood, right? The several washings of blood. Don't fucking forget it. All right. I want to thank everyone who's, who's watched here. Thank everyone who's watched. I mean, uh, it's been a great show. I think we covered lots of ground. And um, oh yeah, let me let me get you something because I did this for these girls, and no one watches it because no one gives the poor Flora babies the attention that they give this Delphi case. And um, and it's just saddening. So let's do this. I'm going to grab this video to share with you. So before you go tonight, please watch this after we close the stream. All right, I'm just trying to close out this chat but let's see let's uh let's take a look at this was it messer's girlfriend what was her name whose car took the several washings um, they were all superstars and the killers hated their beauty and light yes and remember in this staging with delphi okay look in the staging with Delphi, what did we discover? Well, first thing that I discovered, okay, that I am taking credit for discovering, is we have Liberty Post as the magician. Okay, we have Abby posed as the hangman. We have Nordic runes placed upon the girls. Looking like this, looking like this.
together looking like this. We have Brad Holder, whose Facebook used to look like this. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, Frenchie. I can't keep all these knuckleheads straight anymore. My brain is so full of, of shit, but, but yeah. No. But yeah, please, uh, regardless of this shit, please go and check out that video. Let me put it on the screen here. Hey, maybe I can, uh, how could we watch it? Ooh, could we watch it before we leave? I can, I can let, I can let out. That's what I'll do. Let me see if I can uh, add this to the show. This might be difficult. Take me a moment. <clears throat> Let's see. See if it works. Uh, well, maybe it won't work. Why is it not working here? Maybe it's too last minute to try to pull this off. I was going to try to upload it. <clears throat> Let's see. It's a tribute to the floor, girls, but uh, I don't know if I'll be able to get it up here for you before we leave, but I, I wanted to try that. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. Let's see. Is this it? No, it's not it. It's the other one. It's worth waiting for. I mean, we're going to close it out anyway, but I'll probably be able to find it here. Angels. Oh, may have found it. Let's see. There we go. <clears throat> oh, yeah, it's worth doing. Let's do it. Take some click around. Oh, yeah, I'll have to wait for it. <clears throat> but let's see who we got here before we go. I'll close it out this way. Let's see. Um, Nancy Drew. I think it was Johnny Messer. Gia says they were all superstars. And their killers hated their beauty and light. Yeah. They tried to humiliate Liberty. Meow has been a champ for them. They love to body shame Liberty. Yeah. Make her feel less than, but she shone brightly. They had to snuff her out. Please, everybody, subscribe, give a like.
All right, what do we have here? Oh, it's coming. Why is it moving so slow? All right. Jeez, it's taking a long moment. Okay, so I'll give up. I'll give up. But listen, everyone, uh, I'll see you guys later. Please click the link. I'll put it back up here. Let's see. You click this link and please watch it when we're done and you will enjoy it. Please, it'll be worth it. You go watch this, it'll be a good way to end your night. And I uh, promise you won't regret it. So go watch that video. Everyone else, thank you for being here. Freckle Joy, what's up? You're coming in all late. All right. Awesome. Awesome, Freckle Joy. We'll see you later. And uh, let me say goodbye to everyone. So, uh, Digital, Amy. Meow, meow, Frenchie, Gia. Uh, Judy Hathaway, meow, Zedong. Uh, Diamond Eyes, Tree Hugger is a God thing. Um, Jay Marsh, Four Pits, Four Pits. I'm sorry, sorry you missed it late. I need to, uh, gosh, man. You guys should join the Discord. Could, let me tell you this. You'll never miss. Let me do it this way. You will never miss a show if you join Discord. Because before every show, I post it in the Discord. So even though you may miss a notification from YouTube, you won't miss the Discord notification. So I will. Uh, primarily, that's what I do in Discord. I just post the shows. Let me grab this. Let's see. I'll post this in here, and then you join this, you won't miss when I come on. So let's do it this way. Post this. All right. Boom. Here you go. Paste. So this is a Discord link. If you join the Discord, you will always get a notice right before I go on. Usually the minute I start the show... I post it. So that's for all of you who have been missing notifications from YouTube. If you join the Discord, I always post a show as soon as it starts in the Discord. So that's what that is all about. So let's see here. We're getting out of here. Yeah, I like this one. I'll post it again. Liggett is not going to tell the truth on the stand. No, doubt it. Where were are we? Got a phone. I'm so excited. Great job. Enjoy the new phone. Thank you, Amy, and Meow, and Tree Hugger. Uh, let's see. Thank you, Lisa. There's Lisa. Thank you for watching, Lisa. Coming in the chat.
Rochelle, hey, thank you for the uh, super chat, Rochelle. Lurker listening, have a good night. Good night, Rochelle. Please come back to the chat. We miss you. Thank you so much for the super chat. Okay. All right, guys, we're out of here. <clears throat> so it's you in the bushes. <laughs> yeah, it's Rochelle hanging out in the bushes, peeking, lurking. Thanks to everyone for supporting the prof, for those of us who can't afford it. Yes, but you can afford to hit the thumbs up. Please hit the thumbs up. We love you. The tax man hit you bad. Ooh, jeez, Baba. Thanks to our computer digital, French 6290, so many. Yes, thank you all. All right, we love Rochelle. And let me give a thanks again to all of the uh, super chatters, okay? So Rochelle, Rochelle, thank you so much for the super chat. And Curtis Hinkle, thank you for the super chat. And ACV, thank you for the super chat. And uh, is a God thing, thank you for the super chat. And, uh, Tammy Martin, thank you for the super chat. Gia, thank you for the membership. And Tree Hugger, thank you for the super chat. So everyone, wow, you really uh, showered me with your... Uh, gifts tonight and i appreciate that it's it's tough out here in these streets as you know thank you all so much <clears throat> okay we're out of here all right. all right so good night god bless pray for each other and yourselves <clears throat>